Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? This is Tony with La Lina Loca. And, well, this is my guided ship tour of the world's largest cruise ship. It's Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas. Let's go. All right, so I am staying in cabin 12609. And this is a Central Park balcony cabin. So it's, a, it's very deceptive. It looks like you're going to look out at the ocean, but you are not. Let's go out onto the balcony and I'll show you some of the pros and the cons of the Central Park balcony. Here we go. The pros, it's very pretty. It's like a garden party. This is the Central Park area of the Wonder of the Seas. You get a nice view of the pool deck area. You got a couple loungers, a couple seats. The pros is at night, it's very quiet, it's very calm. You get to experience the nighttime skies uh, in a very serene atrium, conservatory, botanical area. The cons. Well, there's a lack of privacy. If you do not remember to close these curtains, you will be able to uh, be viewed by your neighbors across the way. There's a guy looking inquisitively at us now. And uh, also, you may have noticed the music. Uh, yes, that's coming from the pool deck. So you hear what's going on in the pool deck during pool deck times. We are on the wonder of the seas. Look at this little infographic right here. 236,857 gross tons, 1,188 feet long, 210 feet wide. It's a wide cruise ship. I would challenge you to find a wider cruise ship. And the guest capacity, 6,988 passengers with uh, 2,300 international crew. How about that? I'm currently on a trade show cruise. It's only two days long. We got invited because of uh, our travel side business, the, the, our business on the travel side. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my travel partner, Jenny B, could not come because she was feeling not well at the, at the start of this trip. She's doing well now, and we will be cruising together tomorrow. So this is day two of a two-day cruise, and uh, well, I didn't do much unpacking, and I'm fixing to go home tomorrow. You got jars right here. I like this whole area, actually. This is a, a good size cabin for a balcony. It's wide, plenty of room to walk around the bed, lots of storage, hair dryer. Again, uh, use these drawers for a variety of things. I always use a drawer for camera gear. Get this nice uh, top here. This, this whole thing doesn't move, but this desk moves, which is nice. So you can pull it back from the wall, you can move it around, you can position it somewhere else in the cabin. Uh, here's a look at the power. You've got uh, regular U.S. outlets, the 120 outlets, uh, three of those here, and the two kind of empty sockets are European outlets, and, which you can get uh, converters for. I got some converters for this cruise, uh, but I did not bring them. You have a light switch here to give you some of this action, and then uh, a couple USB connections. Chair, you know, I like this. Nice chair to sit in, and then uh, you have a couch. I don't know if this couch does anything conversion-wise. No, it just looks like a regular old couch, you know. But uh, got some nice artwork on the wall. Hey, what are you looking at? What's going on over there? Uh, let's kill this light. Kill the headlights and put it in neutral. I think you got a refrigerator, cooler, whatever they call it over here. I haven't even looked in here. And you got some shelves. Yeah, refrigerator. You gotta keep it refrigerated. Any offspring fans out there? Again, uh, uh, okay view. It's not, you know, I kind of like looking at the sea. These uh, cabins are generally less expensive than a ocean view balcony, but it, it is unique on these Oasis class ships that you have balconies inside the cruise ship. Uh, our first balcony experience was in a balcony just like this on the Oasis of the Seas. Nice, uh, King size bed, very comfortable. Comes with the four pillows. The room stays cool, so like you've got the ventilation going up there. Uh, the room is very, it gets cool, it gets warm, whatever you wanna do. You've got one of two closets that flank the bed. Uh, we had some movement last night. You have to, here's the pro tip, which I did not 
uh, deal with. If you're on rough seas, you might want to, you know, move these to one side so that they don't move much, or just take them down all together if you can, because if not, they're going to be clanging and banging, or hang your clothes up there. I don't think we talked about this uh, previously, but most cruise lines, cruise ships have a laundry service. And uh, if you look in your closet, you'll find these laundry bags, often a description of what services are provided, and you can, uh, you can use the laundry on the ship. It's, you know, it's, it's like a press service or a wash service. It's, it's a little expensive, but in a pinch, if you want to get your favorite shirts pressed up or whatever, uh, you can use the laundry service for that. Um, I didn't even unpack, right? So I've just been doing my best to keep all my stuff together. Camera bag on the right, suitcase on the left, uh, tripod. Yeah, the closet works well for that. And uh, if you look over here at the beds, you've got a little light beside the bed. Got a little AC plug. You got the power. USB. Just a standard USB. I'll be glad when everybody moves to USB-C. It seems like everything that I get now has a USB-C plug. And so uh, as, as technology moves forth, even the uh, things to be innovative, like having these USB connections in cabins, are becoming obsolete. Uh, you got a little cubby there, or nightstand with some, you can fit some stuff in there, stash glasses or whatever. Uh, let's see, television. Haven't turned this thing on at all. There's some hooks under the TV. Now, I don't like to place one of these hooks, honestly, because if you start hooking stuff there, uh, there's a good chance you're gonna run into it, I guess. Uh, but it's good that they have the hooks. I appreciate the hooks. Uh, yeah, the bed, like I said, comfy. You have a matching nightstand on the, on the passenger side of the bed, the left side of the bed, telephone, I was told by somebody, and I don't know if it's true, and I haven't been able to get under the bed, that there might be a uh, another outlet under the bed, European style. That's really why I bought the adapters. I was going to bring my CPAP machine. I'm a new CPAP user, but I did not bring that. Uh, so I don't know if it's under the bed or not. Got a couple of big drawers. And then you have another wardrobe closet type dealio. I feel like this would be the his closet, right? If he has less hanging stuff. I mean, I don't want to make that assumption, but that's the way it works in our relationship. Uh, Jenny has more hanging stuff than I do. And uh, I prefer a cubby so I can stash my t-shirts and whatnot. We got the old safe here. I have my passport stored in here. Just want to take that out so I do not forget it. And then we'll just leave it open. And then of course, we've got, uh, this is a door stop for the closet door which makes sense. Uh, we have a temperature setting. Uh, I'm almost all the way at the bottom. Oh, I don't know. There we go at the bottom. And then uh, this will take it all the way back up at the top. If you'd like your room warmer or colder, uh, most cruise lines, and this isn't going to be a surprise, but it's worth saying the blue is cold and <laughs> the red is warm. Adjust accordingly. It looks like we have an on and an off. I guess you can just turn the whole thing off. There we go. I haven't messed with this one much. Turn it on, maybe, maybe. Look, it's never gonna be on again. Okay, so yeah, the weird button. Two different buttons. This one is on and uh, th this one is off. How about that? Uh, we have a light switch here for the bathroom. This is nice, so uh, I've heard some people like it, not like it. This door is designed to seal shut magnetically, maybe. See, that way, if the doors, you know, if we're in rough seas, it doesn't, it takes some effort to get into this bathroom, and so the door's not sliding around. This is a good sized bathroom, I tell you that. Again, there's something to be said about the cruise cabin being a little bit wider. You got the nice shower pod here. What I really wanted to do was kind of wear my CPAP machine in the shower pod, and then I would be complete when I, you know, my CPAP makes me feel a little bit like Darth Vader. And uh, I think if I did it in the pod, it would be like Vader in the rejuvenation pod. That, that could be video worthy. There is an outlet for a shaver up there. You have some shelves with these little uh, hope stuff doesn't fall off rails. Uh, we've got the blue bag of toiletry goodness that I work out of. We've got a hat, towel, a couple hand towels. I didn't see the little towel to put on the floor. So I, I, li I, you know, I literally risk life and limb today getting out of the shower not stepping on anything but the tile. I survived, it was all good. Uh, soap, 
that I haven't broken open yet. Extra toilet paper. You got to... Do you guys use the toilet brush? Like sometimes when you go to the bathroom, do you feel like you have to clean the toilet? That's what it's there for in case you didn't know. Uh, if you're filling some... Uh, you know, clean the toilet. Don't let the don't let the cabin steward, you know, deal with your mess. That's what I'm saying. And then uh, here we go. We got the... The inside of the shower, you got a clothesline. I've never had success drying stuff, but clothesline, you got a drain, you have a foot in case you want to, or the foot, you got a little like rail if you want to put your foot on it to shave your legs. Uh, if you bring your own soaps, shampoos, you have a caddy there. They've got the all-in-one, the double duty, the salt plus breeze, uh, hair and body wash. And then, uh, you know, if you're a brand new cruiser, you may not know this, most cruise cabin showers, well, they have two, uh, two dials. This one on the right is the water temperature. So, uh, you know, don't scald yourself, test your water temperature, but get it hotter, get it colder, however you like. This one on the left is your water pressure. I'm just noticing these hooks. Maybe this is for wash rags. And then you got a handrail. The, um, the shower head's adjustable. Good bathroom though, I like it. That door is also magnetically uh, got busted in the head. Just trying to get out of the shower. Got a couple hooks here. And uh, that's the one towel I use. I'm being environmentally conscious. The other thing the cruise lines are doing now, if you want to reuse your, reuse your towels, leave them hanging up. And uh, if you want them to be changed, toss them on the floor. I try to get two uses, a couple days uses out of a towel. And uh, this is one of those bathrooms that this uh, sign is uh, so apropos that it's a step up, so uh, don't injure yourself. And there's a red stain. I didn't have any red drink. That's a, that's a bonus feature here on this cabin. Hey everybody, uh, how you guys doing? All right, we've got the emergency information here, chilling. Tell you how to get to your muster station, how to uh, wear your life jacket, and some other warning stuff. What was cool is the, uh, the light is operated, the cabin lights are operated. You have to have a card here. And whoever was the previous, uh, you know, inhabitants of this cabin, they were using a Lego VIP card, which uh, I feel like that was meant just for me. You can see the lights go off pretty quickly. And then you have the cabin light master switch. Peephole. Who's out there? Anybody? Who's out there? Uh, what I did not find is a master switch over here. Oh, just, it's so funny. I couldn't find it for two days. As I mention it, I found it. Master switch. Okay, good. Yeah, well, just one day, yesterday and today. I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call out the lack of a master switch and well, there it is. All right, this is my cabin. It's very nice, very comfortable. Uh, I like it. It is Cabin number 12069. Where am I at on the ship? I'm almost midway. I'm almost midway between the two elevators. So this big old cruise ship, the world's largest cruise ship, two elevator banks. And uh, I have the great fortune <laughs> of being dab nab right in the middle of the two. So every time I leave, it's like, well, which way, which way should I go? Uh, I think I want to show you I wanted, uh, we're going to go up on the top decks, do the top deck tour first, but I will show you one of the, the hot restaurants here on the Wonder of the Seas before we make our way up there, and that is on deck 12. Are you ready? Here we go. The other thing I forgot to mention is this magnet lives uh, on the inside of your door, but if you want to use it to indicate that you don't want to be disturbed, you can use the sleeping off the adventure part of it. Or if you would like to say, hey, please clean my room, uh, out catching the thrills. Uh, since I'm here for just one day, I kind of made up my bed. And I don't want the person to have to worry about it. Uh, great room steward, as it were. She's very kind. Here's the infinite hall on the world's largest cruise ship. Hallways for as far as the eye can see. I can see hallways now, the ship is come. All right. Nice decor. You know, it's uh, very nautical. A lot of blues, creams. This whole floor has the, uh, the vibe of being on the ocean. They also do a nice job on the ship of uh, helping you know which way you are going. So they give you a little bit of, you are here. 
This way it would be forward. This way it would be aft. Give you the stateroom numbers. Hey, I can be a giraffe too. I never noticed that artwork pretty well. Cool thing about this trade show event, it's pretty interesting actually. I've never been on one before, but it's primarily travel agents and vendors. I don't know what the capacity is, but it's not full capacity. So the ship is easy to get around, not a lot of lines. And uh, yeah, it's nice. The other thing that's wild is for this two day event, you don't really pay for anything. All the drinks are included and food and coffees. And so that's pretty nice. Here we are. So these are one set of the elevator banks. Yeah, I remember one time I accidentally stumbled into a dog grooming shop and stepped right into a poodle. <laughs> hey, hey, all right. Got a lot of nice, uh, you know, these uh, screens, LCD screens telling you all different stuff about the ship. Today we are in Coco Cay, 80 degrees. And then uh, what's cool is the elevator ranks on 12 because Wonder is here. They're all themed out for Wonder. Queen of Hearts, or Wonderland, should I say. Uh, Wonderland is kind of the Alice in Wonderland themed restaurant on Royal Caribbean ships. I'll give you a quick look. So this is kind of the what you're getting with the uh, Central Park balcony or the Central Park area. It's, it's literally like live plants in the middle of a cruise ship. It is overlooked by the pool deck. This is a nice feature that was added onto the Wonder, kind of a stadium seating area. The interesting thing is in the stadium seating area, I don't know, maybe too far with this camera, but there's an astronaut up there holding a heart. We'll have to check that out as we get closer, but there's several around the cruise ship. And I don't know what the total count is, but it's hard to see, but there's also a hidden astronaut inside of Central Park. So that's pretty cool. Clean your hands continues to be a big theme on cruise ships. And these elevators work basically the same as other elevators. One ding, one ding is up and two dings is down. And this is the entrance to Wonderland. Very nice theming here. Let's see if we can take a peek in here. Look at this. Just take a quick look. Everything's themed out for Wonderland. How are you? Did you design all of this? Not exactly me, but... Yeah. I think you did. Maybe in my imagination. <laughs> I know, that's cool, because I think a lot of this lives in a lot of our imaginations. So it's really neat here. I've had dinner at Wonderland before. You have to paint the menu to get the menu to show up. You paint it with water. Wow. The Wonderland bar is kind of a happening spot. And then uh, look at this. Very cool themed restaurant overlooking what's called the boardwalk. Very cool. How about that? Thank you. Another feature of the elevator banks are these little alcoves that you can kind of come and look around. They've decorated the open space with really big pieces of art. It's kind of dragon serpentine looking things all the way down to the bottom. And this is kind of an homage, I would say, to classic atriums. The elevator banks do represent one of those let's look up and down the glass elevator type deals. And it really is a beautiful aesthetic. Really get to see a lot of cool stuff just hanging out. All right. So the interesting thing, this cruise ship is so big that they have stuff everywhere. We just looked at Wonderland on deck 12. We're gonna go explore these upper decks. Uh, we'll start probably as high as, we'll go maybe like to 16. The suites, you have to be in the suites to really get a look at those. I do have some footage of suites. Uh, I made a completely whole different video for that. so. Uh, make sure you check out that video. But we'll go and look on deck 16, deck 15, 
and then we'll go to where the action is starting down on deck four and uh, go from there. Again, themed out for Wonderland. Really kind of cool. Themed out for Wonderland. Here's the elevator banks. They try to help you out. You know, like the slides on 15, the, the abyss is on 16. And up we go. Here we are, we're on 16. And we're going to go out to the pool area. Well, let's walk around this little area before we go out into the sports zone just to make sure we don't miss anything. It's like the ship model. It's a nice looking ship model, Wonder of the Seas. We'll duck out the back here. Here we are, deck 16, there's an arcade. Before you go out. Very cool. gonna walk right into the wall. Look like that should be a sliding door. Here's a sliding door. We are sharing space today in Coco Key with the Anthem of the Seas. El Loco Fresh is an included food option here on Royal Caribbean cruise ships. It's very, uh, well, of course, it's Mexican inspired. They're making tortillas right here, which is cool. So you can get tacos. It's like build your own taco. Pork, chicken, beef. You have some rice, beans, pre-made burritos, quesadillas, dillas, quesadilla, quesadilla, nachos, beef and cheese. Then you got some fruits and some sweets. And then, How's it going? Hey, how you doing? Good trying to meet you. What's your name, man? Mark. Mark, nice Mark to meet you. Mark and Wendy, we watch you guys all the time. Ah, uh, thank you so I much. Your hands, bro, <laughs> you do it. That's yeah, yeah. Card. Awesome, man. Where, my wife's over there. You gotta say hi to her. You see the little bun? The little bun right there? Out like of the little, back of the hat? Yeah. Like, no, no. Uh, right in front of the glass. Oh, like yeah, yeah. Head and a little uh, bun. Yeah, I'll go, scare, I'll go say hi. Act like you're just like... That's right, I'll just wander around. Right. What's her name? Wendy. Wendy, all right. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're gonna surprise Wendy. You also have this uh, salsa bar here. So you got salsa, you got guacamole, onion, sour cream, cheese. This is great. Like it's a build your own na nachos dream here. And then if you have the soda package on Royal Caribbean, they have these you know, build your own soda machines. They got like uh, two kajillion different soda flavors. You have to have a special cup that's red with like kind of an RFID chip or, but you can do your sodas, drinks. Again, all this all included. It's very nice. Got the uh, Cantina Fresh Bar. I do love all this theming. It's very, very bright. I like it. And this uh, kind of rolls us out into the sports deck area. Oh, it's a bright and sunny day today. Very nice. Was that Wendy? Wendy, how are you? My name's Tony, how's it going? Tony! So Tony. nice to meet you. Are you guys enjoying El Loco Fresh? It's amazing. Is it crazy fresh? Especially after drinking all day. Ah, so the, the rice soaks it up. How, how was the island today? Is this the best private island? Yes. Love it, love it. My camera overheated, so let's fake say goodbye again. <laughs> Coco Cay, is it the best private island ever? It is best the absolute best ever. in the industry, uh, any cruise line. Coco Cay is where it's at. So good to meet you guys. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of this long, long cruise. Yeah. So yeah, moving out of the El Loco Fresh, we've got the putt-putt course. Look at this. 
Talk about some theming, baby. Starfish are meant to be on golf courses. Look at this. You get your putter out of the mouth of a clam, a giant clam. It may not be a pearl, but it's the ticket to a good time. You got Fudgy the Whale over here. You got this big octopi. This is beautiful. Oh, we got a nice breeze coming off right now. And then look at this. They got zip lining. How about that? This is included, putt putt's included, zip lining's included. Across the way, you got a, a big old pickleball match going on. And the cool thing is, if you uh, take a look down to see what you're zip lining over, well, that's another shot at the boardwalk area. Over here next to the putt putt is what is known as the Wonder Oceanscape, I believe. This is kind of a cool playscape, the Wonder Playscape. It's a kind of cool kids area that starts a deck below. There's climbing, all kinds of stuff going on here. Just a good time for kids. Here's a little bit of a look at the island. Yeah, good spot for parents to bring their kids, climb, burn out that energy before the night begins. It's very cool. Everything's kind of like, is it plastic? No, it's like padded, soft. Of course, here's a great shot of Coco K. It's pretty wild, like if you look at Coco K, let's see if we get a better shot over here. Well, we'll look at it down here. I had kind of a observation today that I noticed. An observation that I observed. Let's be a little more redundant in this conversation. The big uh, observation for me is that well, there's still a lot of Coco Cay that isn't even developed yet. So, you know, if we look from all the way from the left across the main area, all the way to the right, like it's almost the same amount is undeveloped that is developed. So the development stops about right there. And that means you've got all of this left to develop. How about that, man? We're right in the golden hour. The sun's getting ready to set here in the Caribbean, in the Bahamas. On the very back of the ship, you have the abyss. This is a dry slide that takes you from this deck, deck 16, all the way down to the boardwalk. You've got the wipeout bar. And then uh, on Wonder, just one wave simulator machine, more uh, intimately known as Florida. I mean, the Flow Rider. We got, got a little observation area. We got people crushing it on the Flow Rider. Very cool. Very cool. Try to talk over this music. And then you've got the sports court area here, which is really kind of cool. How's it going? Multi-use sports space. You guys know about it. I talked about it, I don't know, a couple years ago when it was in its infancy. Pickleball. Pickleball is all the rage. Get the zip line going on. Of course, the sports court's also used for basketball, all those kind of things. Up above there is the, the sweet sun deck. You have to be in the sweet area to get on the sun deck. But it has a nice uh, over, overlook at the aft of the pool. Got people in line for pickleball. Drinks for sale. Well, not for sale on this ship, but just drinks. Just grab a water. Can you just grab a water? Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And then uh, a nice, what I like that, that they've done with the ping pong here is it's all enclosed. So you don't have to worry about the ping pongs going everywhere, the ping pong balls. Very smart design, actually. A little ping pong pod, as it were. Three tables. Then you got this ping pong set up here. Like it. Like it a lot. You got some 
teenage zone areas right here, 13 to 17. And that's, uh, that's what dominates really the aft of this huge cruise ship. But look at, look, look how far forward you have to go to get forward on this cruise ship. It is cray cray, as the kids say. Wow. I love the uh, artwork on the wall here. All right, we're moving into the pool deck area. And again, they do it well. We're still on deck 16, so we're gonna be overlooking a lot of the pool area. The band that we could hear from the cabin is up on this deck. Tons of loungers, rattan cabanas, built out cabanas. This is one of two of the main pools over here. Got like zero entry, like relax in the water areas. Infinity, jacuzzi, beautiful, beautiful decor. You got a symmetrical, you know, matching pool on the other side. It's, uh, it's the world's largest cruise ship and everything is big. Lots of great places to sit, lots of great spaces. Then you got the climb, the climb, the lime. You got the lime and coconut bar up here. Of course, this is where the band is getting down in Funky Town. Check them out, doing their thing. this side. That's crazy. If you think about it, we've only traversed about a fourth of deck 16. So you also have on the other side, another big pool. Of course, we're on, we're on uh, 16. So this pool for the kids is on 15. Central Park. My cabin's right down there somewhere, right down there. And then, uh, well, here's the astronaut with the heart, the other pool that we were talking about. And then a third pool. Look at this. Wow. Third pool, jacuzzis everywhere. It's, uh, it's huge. Huge. Then as we move forward, you can see there's also water slides. Plenty of room for water slides. You've got a regular twisty red and blue on the left. And then you got one of those toilet bowl like things on the right. I'm sure that has an official name. Reserved cabanas. Plenty of seating. Nice vibe tonight though, right? Dun, dun, dun. And then uh, of course, uh, it would be disrespectful to the anthem of the seas and Royal Caribbean International if we did not marvel at the North Star. That's a great uh, above ship attraction. That whole arm goes like 300 feet in the air. I was on it on the spectrum of the seas. It was scary, but it was cool. I like this, uh, the, making the most use of the space. So not only have the loungers on this side, full on loungers, just have just, if you want to sit upright type chairs, which is cool. Trying to see if anybody's in line for the slide. There is a good little observation spot for the orange slide. And there's nothing better. It hits me every time I'm on these outside decks what cruising is all about. Sure, it's manufactured, uh, but it's manufactured fun and in the best way. Don't know if anybody's on this slide, but. You know, basically you get dumped out. Come on, somebody ride the slide. Less capacity, less kids on this one. Of course, interspersed throughout the deck, uh, restrooms, both male and female, tons of good seating. And uh, we're a deck above the solarium, which is a nice kind of adults only area. Peek through the window. Oh, we can actually get in here. Well, this is one of the specialty restaurants. 
cooked seafood. And of course, it's over on top of the solarium. Let's take a look at Hooked. Let's get Hooked on Hooked. Whew. What a long cruise ship that is. Beautiful art. And then we move back into the wild thing is like, again, with a ship this big, you end up with dining, especially restaurants, all the way up on 16, which is crazy. Let's see if we can go in here just for a quick peek. I don't know. Everything is nautically themed. Very cool looking ship restaurant. Hello. Hey, how are you? Just taking a quick peek. Kind of have a raw bar set up here. And then this is the premier seafood restaurant on board. Thank you. Very nice. Another alcove. And we're way up on the top of the ship now. Look how paper airplane origami all the way down to deck four. Crazy. And uh, well, let's go down a deck. Well, before we do that, let's see what's on this side of this deck. It's like some interesting seating out here. Just some, uh, these, these seats caught my eye. There's, there's four of them. The rest of them is the regular seating. There we go. Down we go. Down we go. Okay, here's some more of the green chair seating. That's what I thought. It's, it's this new bar that has these green chairs. Just right outside the solarium, you have this space. Very cool. And then as we go into the solarium, man, the music's cranking, y'all. So you have to be 16 or older to go into the solarium. And uh, this becomes just a nice, you know, place to relax on the cruise ship. There's a restaurant here called the Solarium Bistro. It's an included restaurant. They have breakfast here. It's a good place to come get breakfast. They also have dinner. We have lunch sometimes also. And then this is a multi-level area with the hot tubs, loungers. Nice big elephant topiary. Seating, bar. More hot, I think this is a cold pool, right? These are cold areas. So you can see out the front of the ship. And you got like cold water seating there. And then, then hot tubs on both sides which is nice. I do like these, uh, these green topiaries. It's pretty cool. More hot tub. More relaxing cold pool. Seems like there's a lot of folks here in the solarium. A lot of times it's crazy. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> I 
again, you're trying to disperse like close to 6,000 people on a cruise ship. We don't have that many today, but uh, there's a lot of spaces for them. Another kind of cool hot tub area on these Oasis class ships are kind of these side hot tubs that look out over, over the side, big hot tub. And then uh, we'll take a quick stroll around deck 15. Of course, the music is still cranking. Down here on the bottom, we have the exit to the slides. More hot tubs, pools, the wet floors. It, this ship is so massive, guys. It's like you almost don't know where to go. I didn't notice this before, but these loungers have uh, little footstools at the bottom. Another hot tub. Hot tubs are full this afternoon. Everybody's getting their hot tub on before the evening, it seems. We got the squir the squirrels. We got the swirls area. I'm gonna keep the music going. Get your ice cream over there. Mixing around, playing around. Here about midway on deck 15, you have this bar, the lime and coconut on this side. And then this is the smoking section. Nice kind of Closed in smoking section. Free from the uh, from the elements. Wow. And then as we're uh, making our way toward the after the ship, we're gonna run right into the Windjammer Buffet. Again, like on a sea day, it gets pretty crowded, but there is tons of seating, tons of places to relax. If you're a pool person, this is one of those ships that has a lot of opportunity for you. So this is the aft elevator section on deck 15. Of course, it is December the 8th. And uh, we've got a lot of holiday Christmas theming. The entrance to the Windjammer is here. It is closed right now, but I do, I'll insert some footage of, uh, of the Windjammer and some of the buffets that have been laid out for us the last couple days. It's been really, uh, really nice. Really nice. Inside they have this, you see where they have the fish, the big fish, yeah. in the water over here. They have one long wrap of this, this thing. Bring two to the one to the one to the Yeah, 
That's the wind jammer right there. Right next to the buffet is the Mason Jar, which is another specialty restaurant uh, that uh, specializes in southern cuisine. Mason Jar, they've got their own dedicated bar, another nice hangout spot. And then uh, we've got the themed out restaurant, Mason Jar. All right, so we've covered We've covered deck 16, 15. Let's go down a level to 14 and see if we can find the card room, ocean adventure, and the royal escape room. Say it with me. Art, 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 art. Love it. All right, the card room. Looks like the card room has been dedicated to a private function. People are meeting in there, but it's a nice kind of a bunch of seats. Not much going on at the card room. Let's pop down through number eight. Let's go down to number eight and look at Central Park. Number eight we go to Central Park. Central Park. So again, this is a really unique spot. A really neat, unique cruise ship design. Designed to combine, you know, horticulture, really, you know, plants, living things in the middle of a cruise ship. Uh, all these plants are real, and it makes for almost a nice, uh, you know, almost an atrium uh, conservatory style setup. It is open air, so if it rains outside, it rains here. And they've got a couple key restaurants, royal restaurants really, in Central Park. First is Chops Grill, that is the steakhouse. A wonderful restaurant. If you are a steakhouse aficionado and you've cruised on Royal, I know you've had Chops Grill. Take a little bit of a look through the windows here as they're getting set up for dinner. And then uh, on the other side, directly opposite from Chops Grill, is unique to the Oasis class ships, unique to Central Park, and it's called Park 150. And uh, this is a restaurant that's going to have, uh, I would say a little more exotic type meals. This is where you're gonna get venison, and you know, where steakhouse is a lot of beef. This is where you're gonna get lamb and venison. You'll get lamb at the steakhouse, but I don't know. So here's Central Park 150 Central Park. A little bit of a look at the menu. Beet salad, pork belly, venison, cauliflower steak, lobster thermidor, duck duo. Really nice restaurant.
This is one of the entrances to the Rising Tide Bar. Now the Rising Tide Bar is a bar that moves between floors. You can see it down there making its way up to this spot. You can jump on this at the very bottom of the cruise ship on deck five, or you can uh, jump on it here on deck eight in Central Park. Pretty chill in Central Park. Earlier today, there was a lot going on here. The trellis bar is a popular spot. And there's just a lot of cool seating. Nice uh, chill vibe in here. You can walk over here, have a seat, relax, have a conversation. What is this? Hello. Another hidden astronaut and a great observation onto the Royal Promenade that starts on deck five. You got the bandstand there. You got the pub. And this is seating for the Italian restaurant. But before we get to the Italian restaurant, let me point out Park Cafe. This is a grab and go, uh, quick restaurant. Great place to get breakfast. They have like a bagel station. In the afternoon here we've got paninis, create your own salad, nice seating here, drinks. And then nice outside seating. They have a roast beef sandwich that is kind of the talk of the town when it comes to Royal Caribbean cruisers. So uh, make sure if you're on an Oasis class ship to get your bouté over there to the Park Cafe and have a roast beef sandwich. The Italian restaurant here in Central Park is Giovanni's Italian Kitchen. Great, great restaurant. So many good dishes here. Nice wine and cocktail bar there. And they even have room for a couple stores up here. The Effie store is here and the Regalia Fine Jewelry. How about that? Central Park. It's beautiful. So if Central Park is a unique design feature on the Oasis class ships, then certainly the boardwalk would also receive that categorization. So we'll go down to the boardwalk and I'll give you a peek down there. If you're unfamiliar on Royal, they put these little plates to tell you what day it is. Down to deck six we go to the boardwalk. Of course, we're on the wrong end of the ship for the boardwalk. That was anticlimactic. What we do have here, though, is the Vitality at Sea Spa and Fitness Center. Uh, this is Royal Caribbean Spa on the Wonder of the Seas. They have gym facilities. Of course, they have treatments, all the things that you want as a person that likes to spa and be fit. So, here's our challenge. We somehow have to make it to the other end of the cruise ship, and well, deck six doesn't do it. You can't get there from here. But we can take a look at the Royal Promenade. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go and explore deck four, and then, and then we will go to the boardwalk. Down to deck four we go. Hey guys. Goodbye, water. You were very good to me. Ooh. Art. Deck five. Oh, this I forgot about this. This is nice. One of the nice features on the Oasis class ships 
is they put their walking track in a covered area. So you have this enormous walking track covered on deck five. It goes the distance around the deck. Uh, let's see what you get. Only takes 2.4 laps to do a mile. So 12 laps down here on deck five will get yourself five miles. How about that? Nice place to walk, especially when the sun is high. Go down one more level to deck four. Again, the reward you get sometimes for walking the stairs is just beautiful. Beautiful art. All right. Man, the music is cranking everywhere on this ship. I guess it's part of the, part of the challenge or the benefit of the open layout is that uh, whatever's happening is happening. Here's the Royal Theater. I'll insert some footage of what the inside of the theater looks like. You can get in here on deck four. And uh, yeah, it's nice. Great place to see a show. Casino Royale. This is the kind of, I think it's a high limit room. You guys doing good? I think we can film in the casino, so I don't want to bother them too much. Flamingos. I didn't know the casino was open, but maybe because we're here at Coco Cay. You've got the attic. This is where they have shows, they do comedy. It's where the nightclub is in the yeah, evening. Looks like they might have a private event going on in here. We'll just take a quick, a quick peek at the attic. And then here's the Diamond Lounge, and I can actually go in the Diamond Lounge now, which is pretty wild, but uh, I'm, I think I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait before I go the first time until Jenny is with me so we can do the Diamond Lounge together. Well, guess what Royal Caribbean is excited about, of course. The icon of the seas. Studio B, this is where they have the ice skating. Of course, this is closed. I'll throw some footage in of that. And uh, so interestingly, here's your choices. Uh, if you're down here facing Studio B, you can go to the left and go into the casino. You can go into the right and go into the casino. The left leads you to the smoking side of the casino. The right leads you to the non-smoking part of the casino. It also lets you walk through the art gallery. If the casino is open, I will probably have to throw the camera off, turn the camera off. But again, I'm surprised that the casino is open because we are here at Coco Cay. Maybe it's, maybe we can do that. big art gallery. What, what impresses me a lot about some of the ship design on a lot of different lines, but especially on Royal, is whoever is a part of their design process, you can tell they're actively involved in saying, what is wasted space? And how can we use the space better? This could just be an average corridor to the casino, but no, it's, it's the art gallery. And again, I think it's a fantastic way to, to do that. All right, let's see. Looks like the casino may be open. Well, I don't know. 
We'll just take a quick stroll through here. We won't stop. Nice big casino, smoking, non-smoking side. The non-smoking side really does, it's really non-smoking. If you look at the little grates in the pillars there, right here also, they have uh, air freshener ionizers to try to make that, uh, make the air fresh. We've got casino bar. We're gonna hightail it right out of here because we don't wanna get in trouble for filming in the casino. I guess it's open. All right, let's get out of here. That brings us back to the aft elevators. We're gonna go up a level or two. Now we go up to six to take a look at, up to deck six to look at the boardwalk. But I did forget that we do have the main dining room set up back here. Everything's closed, what the heck? I don't know if we can just peek in there. Let's see. Just a quick, just a quick peek back there. Main dining room. Yeah, it's one of those deals you guys are gonna have to come on board and see what it actually looks like for the main dining room areas. Some of these closed off areas. Quick time check, it's 5.17 p.m. I'm supposed to meet my friend, Don Terrace of Don's Family Vacations in the buffet for dinner at 6 p.m. Uh, we're gonna go up to six, take a look at the boardwalk, then we'll walk the Royal Promenade, and that'll be it. I'm sure there's things I haven't shown you that you'll have to explore on your own, but I feel like I've done a yeoman's job, a yeoman's job of at least showing you the highlights of the world's largest cruise ship, Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas. Here we go. Like I was building up to earlier, as Grand Central is a unique, or Central Park a unique spot, so too is the boardwalk. The boardwalk, uh, it's what it sounds like. It tries to mimic a boardwalk, maybe like a seaside boardwalk. Classic Zoltar machine. Included food option here, the dog house. They got sausages and a variety of hot dogs. And then, uh, of course, the feature is the carousel. Here on the Wonder of the Seas, uh, this area is dedicated to the Playmakers Bar and Arcade. Good place to get drinks and food. Here's the pro tip on Playmakers. Pro tip number one is use this button to open the door. But they have a little arcade in here. They get a nice TV viewing station that I've never really even seen anybody at. So this is amazing. Sneak off in here. They've got a, a bar right here that has power. If you want a USB and power, if you want to come do some work. And they've got an arcade set up, a ping pong table. And they also have these classic arcade games that you can play for free, included. carousel. It's a different carousel than, say, some of the other ships. It seems a little more open. Got some shops out here. Kids shop. There's a candy shop. Uh, how's it going, guys? You enjoying your uh, big cruise, two-day cruise? Got the bar here. Johnny Rockets. Johnny Rockets normally for pay. Uh, again, I think on this press trip it's included, but uh, normally you have to pay to eat at Johnny Rockets. This is the termination of the Abyss slide we looked at up on 16. Dry slide. People come shooting out of here on these mats. And then uh, all of that to bring us to the Aqua Theater, which is really, really, really the signature of the Oasis class cruise ships. I'll show you some footage from the show last night.
floor there is uh, water. Oh, it looks like we're leaving our, yeah, we're on our way out. We're on the move, y'all. Rock wall included with your cruise. I guess we're on our way, how about that? They also show movies, other things, but there's people that dive off of those high perches up there, each level. It's an amazing feature on the Royal Caribbean Oasis class ships. Themed all the way. Yeah, you can't beat it. I'm just, uh, it's neat to see the ship pass by. Wow. Well, goodbye, Coco K. It was good to know you. Let's walk over here and see if we can get a little glimpse of the Coco K disappearing in the background. There's a song, Perfect Day at Coco K that they play. They're playing that song at 7.30 this morning. I stayed out a little late last night and that was the first thing I heard. It's a lovely day, a lovely day, lovely day at Coco K. Lovely day. <laughs> Hit the like button, subscribe, or I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to come to your house and sing Lovely Day at Coco K. Lovely day. Look at this. Wow. As the sun sets on a wonderful day of cruising in the Caribbean, the wonder of the seas bids adieu to the private island Coco K with a horn blast and a nod to the anthem of the seas. We say to those sailors, may our paths cross again. Fair winds. I don't know that sailing. What's the sailor sailing? Uh, it would have been great. It would have been money if I would have had that right there. But anyways, this is, yeah. Look at this spot. This is kind of behind backstage, but it's open. I don't think I'm breaking any rules. This is kind of neat. Maybe I'm not supposed to be back here. How about that? We are gonna finish this tour up on the Royal Promenade on deck five, but like if, if cruising is anything, it's how majestic uh, the juxtaposition between the man-made and nature is, right? These big behemoth monoliths of ships uh, trying their best to navigate the seas uh, for people's enjoyment of all things. And uh, wow, it's a crazy, crazy thing. Anthem of the Seas, she's coming. She's gonna, she, she, she already wants us to cross path again. She's getting ready to leave her berth. <sighs> wow, 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 wow. And then uh, the sun is dipping below the horizon over there. Wow, this is a unique spot. I don't, again, I don't know if I'm supposed to be over here, but I won't touch anything. Very cool. Very cool. Hmm. All right. I'm your man on the scenes, baby. I'm your man on the street. Oh, th let me show you this. Is that, uh, I feel like that's Harvest K. That, I feel like that's, um, that's NCL's private island. Can you guys see the, the lighthouse over there? Harvest K. I think MSC's called Ocean K. Yeah, that's how close they are. This island here and this island here. Wow. Let's go. All right. Let's make our way to deck five and look at the Royal Promenade. Hmm. What is that saying? Fair winds and trailing winds. Fair seas. Don't listen to the siren song and look for the lighthouse. Every time I see this though, I think this would be cool if you're a small enough kid to traverse the netted jungle gym. Seemingly the uh, the pool music has died down or we can't hear it over here, one or the other. This can 
candy shop looks interesting. I don't think I've ever been in this candy shop. Of course, they're closed. Why is everything closed? I guess it's because we're still getting out to sea. Looks like you can get ice creams. They've got a whole jelly bean selection over there. Sugar Beach. And it looks like you can purchase some candies. Candy. Candy. Baby. Oh wait, wrong song. Sit and wonder. Why, I, I, why. What do you guys think? Is this, this is impressive. Like, it still blows my mind every time I see this on a Oasis class ship. Just the majesty and the, the playfulness the fun, <laughs> the fun of the boardwalk. The boardwalk neighborhood, as it were. All right, and look, there's some more stuff on deck six. I thought we were done with deck six, but we're not. I'm just ready to go to deck five. I'm, uh, I'm fading fast, guys. When I started this tour, I was at 3,000 steps in. I'm now at 7,000 steps in for those that keep track of their steps. You got the loyalty desk over there, which is nice. You have the schooner bar over here, which is the piano bar. Sometimes when it's not a piano bar, like during the day, they'll use it to play trivia. Kind of a nice classic nautical vibe to it. Then this bar in the back is usually always open. Anytime there's stuff that's going on in the promenade, People will stake out these seats on the side so that they can get a good view of the promenade. And certainly that makes sense because you can kind of watch what's going on. Uh, as you see that the rising tide bar is on the move, making its way up to deck eight. It's a real fun place to listen to music though, especially when the piano players here, you can be really close for sing along and Pretty intimate little, intimate little area on a big, big cruise ship. So you got the loyalty desk, you got the shore excursion desk, and then you've got the photos picture gallery. And just like most other cruise lines, they're digital. It's not a wall of pictures anymore. You can uh, peruse. You can peruse your pictures. They will normally have things for sale, GoPro and GoPro accessories. And of course, a lot of wonderful people to help you with your picture needs. How you guys doing? Okay. So. That's uh, deck seven. Is it deck seven? No, it's deck six. Now, Rising Tide Bar, and all that's left to do is take a look at the, at the Royal Promenade. Let's go. I feel like we missed a sushi place. Azumi, I believe that's on deck four. That's your, uh, that's your assignment. Next time you're on the ship is find Azumi, because there's nothing better than the sushi. All right, so. Deck five, the Royal Promenade. Of course, a uh, popular feature is the Bionic Bar. If you are tired of humanoids making your drinks, you can come pay a robot to drink. Drink your makes, make your drinks. It's kind of cool, it's a cool show. They shake it, they stir it, they put it in a cup, they serve it to you. Robots, beware of the robots, that's what I'm saying. The other thing that's cool about the Bionic Bar is kind of reminds you where you come on the cruise ship at when we disembark tomorrow. It will probably be through these doors here, right across from guest services. Uh, here's the bottom of the Rising Tide Bar. Let's walk back toward the elevators here. I'm, I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm confused. I'm pretty sure these are the, these are the aft elevators. The aft elevators. We also have the upper level of the main dining room. 
I know I said I wasn't going to show you, but since these doors are open and I haven't passed out yet, here's dinner tonight. What would you have? I'm having, I've been in the buffet every time. I do like the main dining, but sometimes when you got a lot to do, the buffet is the way to go. We'll take a quick look at the main dining room. Tablecloths, I don't know if you guys are a fan or tablecloths or not, but uh, the tablecloths in full effect in the main dining room here at Royal Caribbean. And then uh, look at this massive wall tapestry, just multi-level. These guys are getting ready to do their shifts. It's beautiful, beautiful, new. Mm. What do you think? What do you think? Huge facilities. I mean, you gotta have big facilities if you're gonna service over 6,000 people. You gotta have a lot of places for them to eat, a lot of places for them to go. Thanks a lot. Yeah. At night, all these stations are full of people trying to make sure that everybody gets seated where they're supposed to sit. takes us back into the Royal Promenade. What's really, what was really nice coming into this ship is that the fact that it's decorated for Christmas. If you got internet issues, you go to the Zoom desk there. If you've got uh, I need a watch issues, you go to the store here. And well, if you've got any other pressing issues, you go to the guest services. Oh, we got something going on at the bandstand. I don't know what's going on. They're giving away some prizes for the trade event. So while they're doing that, I think we'll sneak into the Royal Promenade or the Promenade Cafe here and get a coffee. The nice thing about the Promenade Cafe is that this food is available uh, included and this is 24 hours a day so you can come to this spot you can get some pre-brewed coffee hot waters teas ice water and then uh, for a certain period of time the coffee bar is open so uh, I think I'm gonna get a coffee while we're waiting for them to announce all the winners and then of course you got a lot of nice seating a lot of nice work area and uh, yeah we're gonna we'll grab a we'll grab a coffee can I do a uh, Iced coffee with the liquid sugar and some cream, please. Sandeep, how's the day been? Yeah, yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Woo! Got ourselves a little bit of coffee. The awards are over. We're gonna finish this up. All right, the awards are over. And uh, let's look at the Royal Promenade. There is a picture studio up there so you can get professional pictures made. We've got uh, another watch store, Regalia. The next cruise desk, you can go and book your next cruise. And every Oasis class ship has two main features in the Royal Promenade. They'll either have some sort of car on one end and then like a big art installation on the next end. And then uh, of course, like I mentioned, we are decor for Christmas. The, the red and green, the beautiful Christmas tree, uh, the Christmas balls hanging from the ceiling. And uh, if, if you are a Royal Caribbean fan, I would say one of the reasons is because you like this promenade. Multi-deck promenade, big open feeling, really feels like you're in a big space, in a resort, inside of a cruise ship. You've got a pub over here, usually a pub singer at night. Get some beers, Sorrento's Pizza. This is the classic pizza on Royal Caribbean. The soda machines we talked about. Got a lot of different pizza options. Got some cold options. And uh, plenty of seating. Get some drinks. The other cool thing about the Royal Promenade, or not cool, depending how you feel about commerce, uh, they do do a lot of sales here. Oh my goodness. There's Lego on this cruise ship. Lego for sale, how about that? We've got uh, the... Royal Caribbean branded shop over here. Get your ship models, your t-shirts. A lot of people getting, getting the merch today. 
the pure merchant, merchants over there is going to be the alcohol store. The, you know, like just a whole big old pile of commerce right here in the middle of the Royal Promenade. And then you got this cowboy hat. That's the big feature on this end of the Royal Promenade. Boleros. This is a Latin inspired club. And then a full Starbucks, which is nice. The pro tip though, where we were at at the Royal Promenade, if this was a normal cruise and they weren't just giving away Starbucks, you can get Starbucks coffee at the Royal Promenade included, like with any of your drink packages. Uh, but at Starbucks, you have to pay the regular price. Look at Boleros. They have a hot Latin band here later. It's a lot of, there's a decent amount of people on this ship. The more, you know, as we're in these public areas, didn't seem as crowded before. And what is nice is a dedicated karaoke place, the karaoke lounge, the Spotlight Karaoke. We'll take a dip in the look in here. I do like the, uh, the commitment to karaoke. So you've got a bar, you've got a stage, and then you have a couple of private rooms that you can rent and have your own little karaoke party, which is, which is really cool. All right, guys, that is my guided tour, my walking tour around the world's largest cruise ship, Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas. Have you been on the ship? Do you want to be on the ship? What do you think? What was your favorite? What was your favorite thing that you saw during this tour? It's up to you now. Leave a comment below. Make sure you like, subscribe. Well, uh, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.